It's a new year that means resolutions and new things and turning over a new leaf. And I know you guys don't care, but I'll tell you anyways, like my goal for this year and the year that I'm going to turn 40 is best year ever. Like that's the mission and that's the goal. But at least WWE is starting off the year on a right foot when it comes to SmackDown. It's New Year's Day. People are trying to come down off of their hangovers or whatever the hell they've been doing or trying to figure out, you know, hey, I got a timeout here between the two uh, college football playoff semifinals. They dive right in with our tribal chief because the tribal chief wants to watch some <laughs> Ohio State Clemson action too. Like he's got some skin in the game, I'm sure, between Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. But, you know, our tribal chief comes out and he starts the year off right. Like it's fascinating to me to feel the intensity and like the masculinity that just oozes from this version of babyface Roman Reigns. Like you think of masculine wrestlers over the years and you think of like Scott Hall oozed machismo, especially as Reza Ramon, but just in general, like I was just a masculine man. Like if you're thinking of a man's man, you're thinking about that type of dude. You look at Roman Reigns and you're like, that's a man right there. Now, he's even got Paul Heyman acting like a secondary puppet figure at this point. Like, that's impressive stuff. And he wears the golden glove because everything he touches turns to greatness. Jay's got a new shirt because of Roman. He's now called Main Event Jay because of Roman. I hope Kevin Owens is enjoying his time on Relevancy Island because there's a heavy, heavy, cost to pay to be there. Ask Jay and Jay's family. If he's done some of the stuff that he's done to his own kin, his flesh and blood KO, what the hell do you think he's going to do with you, Pudding Pop? You got mayonnaise in your head if you want to sit there and keep coming after the tribal chief. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? You got syrup clogging your synapses, you mother canucker. It's horrible. And speaking of horrible, you've got Sami Zayn. He's on commentary for this King Corbin Biggie match. And, you know, you got freaking commentary talking about him being the former Intercontinental Champion. The, you know, just trying to bring up all of these sore spots. And as the match is going on, Sami Zayn decides that being someone who is unselfish, being somebody who respects him, his competitors, including a Big E, who is now the Intercontinental Champion, as much as we don't like it, you know, Sami Zayn showed his respect for Big E, but also wanted to make sure that he understands as Intercontinental Champion, the landscape, the scope is different, and you've got to watch your back. And that's why he came into the ring and interfered in Big E's match. He wanted to teach him a valuable, valuable lesson. And he certainly did. But of course, holla holla, playa. It comes in one of the many, it seemed like, Teddy Long specials in the night. All of a sudden, out comes Apollo Crews, and you got a freaking tag match. And Sami Zayn's eating a pinfall to Apollo Crews. I could have done without all of this, just so that way you could tease an Apollo Crews biggie IC title match next week. Yeah, I'm good. I'll pass. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying. And yes, I know in theory that should be a match that I'm all about. It's like, yeah, stick it to Whitey, but... You know, Sami Zayn's the ultimate ally here. He put over one black man to become the new IC champion last week, and he put up a, put over a Paulo Cruz here. Like, why is everybody hating on Sami Zayn so much? You know, it's not just about skin color. It's not. Just saying. Who's your ally? And a great ally at that. It was total crap that he was put in that position last week. He was unprepared. No notice. Lumberjack match. In this pandemic environment, reckless and irresponsible by the company. Speaking of reckless and irresponsible with the company is uh, all the years that they've allowed both Natalia and Tamina uh, to collect paychecks. Riot Squad versus Natalia and Tamina. This thing was short, as it should have been. The best part of it was Billy Kay. At least her gimmick, or whatever they're doing with her right now, has a little bit of humor to it. Like, it's okay. Uh, but Riot Squad is bad, and Natalia and Tamina, good God, what else would you think of them? Like, the only shot you have of Tamina ever really getting anything out of her, at this point, really, would be to put her with the Tribal Chief. The Tribal Chief touches things, it goes to gold. 
So why don't you put Tamina with that group and make her a big badass enforcer? Because that could actually work. It would especially mean that she didn't have to wrestle. Calm it out. What ended up becoming your one-hour main event, Sasha and Bianca versus Carmella and Bailey. I only asked that Bianca not eat the pinfall here, and she didn't. Sasha did. It was stunning. It was like Bianca was stunning. Mwah. And I'll say, like, Sasha looks okay, too. Yes, she does. Uh, I'm still not digging the black man serving for the white wand. Like, that just rubs me the wrong way. Maybe it shouldn't, but it does. I know it rubs other people the wrong way, and if it does, I certainly understand that. Not necessarily enough for me to rant and rage about, but it, it's it's kind of annoying here. And, you know, it's it's really weird. Like, this is just, it, this isn't so much a randomly thrown together thing that there's actually some type of storyline reason, like you're trying to take multiple stories and smash them together. But, you know, for the purposes of advancing Sasha and Carmella, You've kind of put Bianca and Bailey on the back burner, and that just seems kind of weird to me. So you got this whole segment with the Street Profits, and they're starting off with their 2021, whatever the hell they want to call it. And at one point in time, Montez Ford refers to who as the heartache kid? <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! No, Montez. He's the hemorrhoid kid, because for some reason... He's been a pain in the ass and allowed to still be a pain in the ass for years. Like a hemorrhoid. Ain't no heartache, kid. That's dumb. The hemorrhoid kid is what we should refer to him as forever. Who? <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Why are they really calling these guys the dirty dogs? The dirty dogs. And spell D-A-W-G-S. There's nothing dog about this tag team. Furthermore, there's nothing dirty dogs about this tag team. I realize you didn't just want to have them be wrestler A and wrestler B together, but you couldn't come up with a better name than the dirty dogs? Good Lord. If it doesn't involve Roman on this show, it's usually trash. I guess that's what I'm supposed to get out of this. You know, and you have... Rude and he who shall not be named beating up the Street Profits. Yippee! We're getting another tag team title match between these two teams. <clears throat> I'll pass. Another kind of randomly thrown together tag match. Daniel Bryan and Otis versus Cesaro and Shinsuke. Please, oh please, for the love of God, tell me why they were showing that segment in the Alpha Gym or whatever the hell it is before the match. Why are they showing Daniel Bryan demonstrating to Otis how Triple H, God himself, took the back door to China for years. Ugh. It's all in the hip. It's all in the hip. Like, you could at least say it is building a little bit towards the Royal Rumble and setting the table potentially for a Daniel Bryan to win the Royal Rumble, but not like this. Not like this. Why are you having Daniel Bryan looking like he's dry humping Otis's tube steak? Like, that's ridiculous. It's like you had Daniel Bryan going to the Alpha Gym and he said, I found a glory hole. <laughs> oh. And then you got him doing your <laughs> Otis and Daniel Bryan win. You got him doing the fucking three amigos. Who's Ned Niederlander and who's Dusty Bottoms here? Oh my God. It's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. <sighs> Who wrote this crap? Oh my God. We couldn't get to the main event and end this show quick enough tonight. And thankfully we did. Kevin Owens demanded this match. And of course, because the Tribal Chief gets zero appreciation from that low down, no good scrap iron Adam Pierce, Kevin Owens gets exactly what he wants. He gets Kevin Owens versus Jey Uso in the main event of SmackDown. You're welcome, Kevin Owens, for yet another main event on this show. You can thank Jey Uso, main event Jey, and especially the tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns, for this happening and being allowed to happen. Now, of course, Kevin Owens goes out there and beats Jey Uso because Jey on his own can't ever do anything right. Like, totally incompetent. He should be thankful that is because 
is such a loving and forgiving patriarchal figure in that Samoan dynasty because he should have kicked them out months ago. Because every time he tells Jay to go in there and handle business, he fails to handle business. And then, of course, Kevin Owens, fucking pudding mouth with his freaking mayonnaise for brains and syrup clogging his synapses, wants to sit there and attack Jay Uso. He wants to attack him after the match. You've already achieved the victory. There's no need for this. But, but you probably feel there is because you're stupid. You want to antagonize the tribal chief. You want to try and call him out. You want to try and force his hand. You want to take control of the situation. Let's be clear by now, if you haven't figured it out, you have absolutely zero control of the situation. And one more time, when you maybe get the chance to face off against Roman at the Royal Rumble, you'll find out just how little bit of control you have. Because when it came time, out from the Thunderdome emerged our glorious tribal chief, and he whooped your ass. Yeah, how'd that handcuff and a J work out, bitch? Yeah. You took a tumble. Happy New Year, KO. Like, seriously, this is the most relevant that Kevin Owens has been to me in a long, long time. I love this story between Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns. It is the one thing right now that SmackDown really, truly has going for it. As admittedly, in recent weeks, I feel like this show has slipped quite a bit. Not just a little bit, but quite a bit. But thankfully, you get Roman at the beginning, Roman a little in the middle, Roman at the end. By God, that is enough to carry the show overall. But they need to get a little bit better here. Like, for your first show of the year, it should have been bigger and more spectacular. Not throwing a together a bunch of Teddy Long specials because you were too lazy to write out a decent, compelling show for two hours on network television on a Friday night. Which is really disappointing considering the viewership numbers that you got last week. Like, you had well over 3 million people on average watch the entire show. You would think you would do everything in your power outside of what you did with Roman Reigns, which was, of course, really good because it's Roman Reigns, so he makes everything good. You would think you would do more, WWE, to want to reward those fans, or more importantly, give a reason for those fans that might decide, hey, you know, it wasn't that bad, I'll come back and watch it again this week, to actually come back and watch it this week and continue to keep watching it. And I promise you, this show didn't get the job done. Instead of featuring Sasha Banks, your women's champion, like a star, you had her jobbing out the fucking Carmella. Now, who does that? You're showing Daniel Bryan dry humping Otis's butt cheeks. It's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. It's 2021. New Year's same old shit. You're still trying to feature him because you pay him a bunch of money. Who? Dolph Ziggler. You know, you're, you've got eight to nine segments that you run in a given week and you're giving one of them to the Riot Squad and Italian Tamina? What the hell is wrong with you? There has to be a better use of your time. There have to be better things that you can do. At this point in time, I'd just rather see an hour and a half of Roman and all of his stuff and squeeze everything else into a half hour because that's about the best you can pull off at this point. God! Such a golden opportunity coming off of last week's huge viewership number for a Christmas Day taped holiday show. And this is what you threw out there, WWE. Highly disappointed. Just like KO's probably highly disappointed because he thought he was going to get one up on the Tribal Chief. Well, <laughs> how'd that work out for you? So, if y'all agree that this show was lame and a disappointment, Smash that subscribe button. Click the bell. What the hell? So that way you're fucking notified of future videos. Subscribe or die. Do it and do it now. And watch other videos on this channel too, damn you. All right, I'm out.